Do you ever feel like nothing is going right? That's how a woman named Lorraine describes a season in her life. It was just life things all caving in at once. Her family had lost their home during a series of bad storms. In 2004. They didn't have any insurance and lived with family for a couple years. Then Lorraine's husband lost his job and she totaled the car. How did we wind up here? Lorraine wondered what God was trying to say through all this. Maybe God was disciplining her husband for something. And I actually was questioning, was he walking with God? So she and her husband got some counsel. I was taking it upon myself to take this to our pastor. The pastor spent a few days thinking and looking at scripture. They got back together and he addressed some questions. Lorraine thought that would be the end of the conversation. But then her pastor made an observation she hadn't asked for. He said, Every time I tried to talk to your husband, you interrupted. (laughs) This pastor opened Ephesians 5.33. It reads, Let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This pastor identified a problem that was deeper than housing and vehicle issues. Lorraine wasn't respecting her husband, and she was convicted by her pastor's observation. So she Googled this phrase. How to respect your husband. The results of that internet search deeply affected this couple. Lorraine discovered a 30-day challenge from Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth. It it is life-changing. It's a challenge that is transforming marriages everywhere. It really felt like we were boyfriend and girlfriend all over again. You know, we were having fun. You would be surprised at how those little things not only affect him, but they would affect you. He really thinks I'm important, and he thinks what I have to say is important. It was just like a whole big turnaround. I was so fascinated and shocked by the difference in our home. It was so amazingly beautiful. This is the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, author of Adorned. For February 18th, 2022, I'm Dana Gresh. Here at Revive Our Hearts, we constantly get emails from women who've heard about the 30-day husband encouragement challenge that we offer. Now, in case you may have missed it, here's the challenge. For the next 30 days, purpose not to say anything negative about your husband to your husband or to anyone else about him. And every day for the next 30 days, take some time to let your husband know something that you appreciate or admire about him. We get a steady stream of emails from women who have taken this challenge. Some of them admit they didn't make it all the way through the 30 days, and a few tell us that they didn't see any significant change in their husband. But most of them tell stories of change, of husbands responding to affirmation with acts of love and of wives who've learned to look for the best in their husbands. Today, we'll hear several of those stories. You get a picture of what it's like to take the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge. As we explore the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge, Nancy's going to be reading some passages from this booklet from Revive Our Hearts. But we'll start this exploration of the 30-day challenge by returning to the story of Lorraine. When her pastor suggested that her disrespect was affecting her marriage, she looked back at her past and noticed some patterns. My parents divorced when I was 13. And Lorraine sometimes threatened to leave during conflict with her husband. Just the first thing I would think of, I guess I thought that that's what you were supposed to do. I was just immature. But there was a bigger issue. It was more questioning in my mind his decisions. As Lorraine second-guessed her husband and tried to take over practical matters of running a home, her husband tended to step back and let her take over. When we met and married, I was 21 and just very independent and didn't know how to lean on him or to look to him because I could you know, pretty much figure out things and do things on my own. I wasn't putting any trust or faith in anything that he was doing not valuing him and not valuing his, you know, his decisions. And I actually was questioning, was he walking with God? And all the while, not even looking at at me. I just kept looking at him and trying to find out, okay, what has he done wrong? (laughs) And not really looking at my part in it. These long-standing patterns were about to be rocked 
when Lorraine did an online search for the words, How to Respect Your Husband. She ended up at ReviveOurHearts.com and decided to go for the 30-day challenge. It's the same challenge you'll embark on when you get a copy of the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge. I have my original copy here in front of me, and I, I said that I began today June 19th, 2006. As she began the study, Lorraine was struck by Proverbs 31, 11 to 12. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. And that was the very first verse that convicted me the most because I, my husband didn't trust me. And I certainly wasn't doing him any good, you know. So that was the first time, you know, looking at myself that I had a part in this too. So Lorraine continued the challenge to say nothing negative about her husband. And she continued speaking life, using ideas in the booklet, the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge. I noticed a difference in him, you know, by like the, the fourth day. I mean, it was like, you know, he has changed. Lorraine had been struggling with an issue at her son's school. Early in the challenge, her husband took initiative, stepped in, and started solving that problem. And more change was still to come, especially in the area of finances. Day seven. Money is the root of much marital discord. Ask yourself, am I being negative toward my husband in the area of finances? And in my notes, I've written, I have been. Determine not to speak evil of your husband in this area. Discover ways to encourage and help him instead. He just started handling some things. If he's weak in this area, encourage any good decisions that he does make. And he he took this on quietly and started doing things. And again, it was just something that I had to stay out of and let him deal with. It was hard not to do it. You know, he stepped right in. At the beginning, it was hard because I didn't know if he was capable of taking on the responsibility. I had to trust God to work through my husband. God kept asking me, Lorraine, do you trust me? (laughs) I was like, yes, Lord, you know I do. But then he said, trust your husband. It was really hard to let go, (laughs) to let him do it his way. That's why it was hard at first to trust, because his way is different than my way. Men respond to women who respect them. What do you respect about your husband? That respect caused him to raise up and take on that responsibility and that role. Nearly every man has some core characteristic that can be nurtured and respected. And it's been wonderful. He just said that was just a big turning point for him when I started doing these things. It it is life-changing. After completing this challenge, Lorraine found out that her husband had been praying for this kind of breakthrough for years. He couldn't change me, and so he had kind of quietly you know, turned me over to God <laughs> and let the Lord fix me. <laughs> and we're thankful God chose to use the 30-day Husband Encouragement Challenge. Just been kind of a joke between us. Who had changed the most? I can finally see that it was me that needed to change the most. (laughs) As we explore the power of encouragement, I want to acknowledge this. You might be in a very difficult situation, one that involves grievous sin against you. Abuse, for example. Hear me loud and clear. We are not saying, if you just encourage your husband more, he'll stop abusing you. No, that's not what we're saying. The responsibility for the sins of others rests completely on their shoulders. And in that kind of scenario, you desperately need the wise counsel of a godly person, someone who can look at your circumstances from an objective and biblical perspective, someone who will pray with you and advise you. Does that make sense? Most of us wives, we need to do a better job of encouraging our husbands, but some wives in certain specific scenarios actually need to take the courageous first step of reaching out to stop the madness in your world. Now, having said that, we turn to a woman named Julie. She longed for her husband to lead her family in godliness, so she let him know her expectations. A lot of it was me pushing him, especially on a spiritual side, to be that spiritual leader that we all long for. He didn't respond exactly as she'd hoped. Because of my husband's up- 
upbringing and his involvement in the church and his relationship with Christ, he was never really taught how to be a leader. I'm in ministry and he's not, and so he sometimes feels it feels as if I'm trying to instruct him or minister to him instead of allowing him to minister to me. So when she talked with him about growth opportunities, it sounded like this. Hey, there's this class at church, or hey, there's this Bible study, hey, and, and just constantly kind of pushing him. And when Julie's husband didn't jump at all these opportunities, she interpreted his response this way. Typical male reaction of dig in your heels and get resentful. A lot of times he, he would verbalize that saying, you don't think I'm spiritual enough for you, or you're judging me, or you make me feel as if I'm not doing my job. Julie was about to be challenged to change her tactics. She attended a True Woman conference. They had a video at the conference of a pastor's wife. The pastor's wife on that video was Kimberly Wagner. I didn't realize that I was emasculating my husband. One point in Kimberly Wagner's story stood out to Julie. That it was her job as a helper to help him change. (laughs) I thought the helper role was you help your husband improve. (laughs) And I could help him with his grammar. I could help him uh, to think more logically. I could help him to be more organized. Uh, Myself, as well as the ladies I was with uh, attending the conference, really were struck to the heart of how maybe we don't outwardly say some of the things that maybe she had said to her husband, but we knew that the attitude of our heart sometimes were pretty close to her attitudes. She visited ReviveOurHearts.com and signed up for the 30-Day Husband Encouragement Challenge. Here's what she read on day one. To refresh your memory, here's the challenge for the next 30 days. You can't say anything negative about your husband to your husband or to someone else about your husband. Julie didn't think she spoke negatively to her husband, but she did complain about him to other women. I quickly brought to mind a lot of conversations or a lot of comments that I had made that I was like, oh, those are what that's talking about. Not long after starting this challenge, Julie was with a group of wives. When they started complaining about their husbands, Julie realized she couldn't participate. I would choose instead to say, guess what he did last week? Choose to find something that he did well. Julie was also struck by another paragraph from day one of the 30-day husband encouragement challenge. Have you ever thanked your husband for choosing you above all other women? He took the initiative and he chose me. Am I making him feel good about his choice, or am I making him regret that he chose me instead of someone else? He found you attractive as a person and appreciated you. This especially meant a lot to Julie since she and her husband married when she was in her mid-30s. I was waiting to be found. A lot of people were like, oh, I can't believe you can't find a man. And I'm like, I'm not looking. (laughs) I'm waiting to be found. (laughs) And I just said, you know, you went through your whole 20s. And you could have chosen somebody by then, and you didn't. And I'm just so thankful that you waited for me and that you sought for me and pursued me when we did meet. So I just thanked him for being being courageous in doing that. As a result of the challenge, Julie backed away from pressuring her husband to grow in leadership. I wouldn't appreciate my husband buying me a book on how to lose weight. It's the same thing of buying your husband a book for spiritual leadership. You know, it's like, what are you really saying? And God was working on the heart of Julie's husband, encouraging him to become more of a leader. Julie can see how this process was enhanced by her month-long focus on encouragement. The 30-day challenge really, I think, added a little bit more fuel to the fire of him feeling uplifted and more appreciated. I, th- I think as, as wives, we sometimes drain our husbands because we, we want all this stuff from them. We want them to love us. We want them to care for us. We want them to protect us. We want them to listen to us and, and all this. And we sometimes take a lot from them. And if they are trying to lead um, the best they can, sometimes it, it becomes very draining on them. And so I, I felt like the 30-day uh, challenge really 
kind of gave him maybe a little bit of wind in his sails for that. Julie's husband is now involved in a year-long leadership training class at church, a decision he made without pressure from his wife, and Julie is trying to make encouragement a regular part of her life. You would be surprised at how those little things not only affect him, but they would affect you. As we explore the principles found in the booklet, The 30-Day Husband Encouragement Challenge, we'll hear from a woman who, at one time, could not stand to be in the same room with her husband. Like him in one room and me in another. We really tried to avoid each other's company as much as possible. Diana grew up hearing about God, but she had a lot of misconceptions about him. I never thought that God loved me. I thought, you know, yeah, he loved the world, he gave his son, but... I'm sure he doesn't really care about me as a person. Early on, she experienced panic attacks and a lot of anxiety. These only got worse after getting married. Her husband didn't know how to handle these episodes. It really got to the point where, due to the the stress of anxiety and panic that I had in me, I couldn't even eat. And this was the hardest part for him because he would sit with me on the table every night with a spoon (laughs) trying to feed me and then me crying and throwing out the food because I couldn't do it. And it was, it was just so hard for him. It really was. You know, the way he would treat me wasn't the guy that I had married. This was a totally different man. Like, I was like, I mean, did they switch him one night while I was sleeping? Is this like his evil twin brother? It was just so crazy and, and harsh all the time. The marriage was marked by serious conflict. When tensions rose, Diana was very harsh with her husband. There was a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, a lot of um, harsh words. There was so much distance between me and him. You know, and I remember that I used to wake up in the morning every day arguing and, and complaining and fighting, and our day just started off like that. From the moment we opened our eyes, we were arguing, we were fighting, we were discussing to we just fell asleep. And it was like that every single day. My reaction towards him was unrespectful. And I think it really made him feel like he was not the man in the house. And he just retracted more and more and more and more away from me, from our home, staying at work later, all of this just wanting to be as far away as possible. In her darkest time, Diana realized the only place she could turn was to God. So I said, you know, I don't know if you care about me. I don't know if you're holding on to me, but I am going to hold on to you because you're all I've got. And I said, okay, you know, like I need to start feeding myself with this word. So I started listening to 89.3, started to listen to Revive Our Hearts. And the word of God that she heard had a huge effect on her. I began to see God as what He is, a loving Father, someone that loved me and cared for me. I knew that He wanted to change my life and wanted to help me. And I would listen literally eight hours a day to all her programs. I would go back into the archives and listen and listen and listen to God's word and see it in front of my eyes. I used to work um, at a doctor's office doing billing, and my desk was a corner desk, and I filled up all my wall was full of scripture, all of it, from bottom to top, full of scripture, the whole day just feeding my mind with the truth about God's worth. And, you know, there's no way that you can be exposed to the word of God and there not be a change. You know, everything began to change for me. As Diana filled her mind with God's word, the panic attacks subsided. To the point where I am today, that that's just a faded away memory in my life. As a Revive Our Hearts listener, Diana sometimes heard Nancy issue the 30-day husband encouragement challenge, and Diana wasn't interested. I really did not want to do it. I didn't think he deserved, you know, for me to do that. But, you know, she was talking about how I am responsible for my own actions and attitudes, regardless of how the other person acts. I keep using him as an excuse not to change and take responsibility for my actions. And then I, you know, and God began to change my heart like that little by little. And after that, I said, you know what? This is something I need to do. 
And if he responds to it, well, fine. And if he doesn't, that's fine too. I did what I was responsible for before God. And then the rest, I just left it in his hands and, and did the challenge and said, okay, Lord, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm doing it for you because I need to be the woman that you want me to be. But I really did not expect it to have the impact that it did. I remember uh, one day, the challenge talked about writing him a letter. And I wrote him this very beautiful letter, and I read it to him, and it was crazy. You know, he was teary-eyed. I saw him in a way that I had not seen him look at me for such a long time. He said on that day, some of the most beautiful words I had heard him say in my life. He told me how much he loved me, how much he cared about me, how much he thanked God for me, how I was an extraordinary woman. It really just touched him to get home and feel like he was that man in the house. I'm never going to forget that day. It is like a picture in my mind. Everything about him changed. I think he really saw God. Just this new passion for the Lord that he had never had flourished. And just being that leader that I always longed for, but I had never let him be. And I just saw him open up in every area of his life because he saw what God could do in my life. And I think that really encouraged him to say, you know what, if God did it in her, he can do it in me, and he can do it in any other marriage and in any other couple. It really felt like we were boyfriend and girlfriend all over again. You know, we were having fun. We were going out for like, you know, little late dinners. And I felt all the excitement and all the butterflies and all the freshness that I would feel when we had just started our relationship. And he felt the same way. Just a few days into the challenge, it was like this newness in our relationship, this refreshment, this sense of not wanting to be apart for a minute. It was just puppy love all over again. Diana first took that challenge three years ago, and the change she experienced has been lasting. We're just like any other couple. We have our arguments, we have our troubles, we have our areas where we don't agree. But definitely our home is completely different. And I was able to see him for the man that he could be in Christ and the man he was in God, instead of, you know, with my worldly flesh eyes, just seeing him as just another person, and that's it. I was so fascinated and shocked by the difference in our home. It was so amazingly beautiful. Mm, I love that. I love hearing stories of God's truth working in the lives of women. But I got to say, to those in abusive relationships, I want to repeat this. This is not a magic formula that's going to fix others who are sinning against you. If you're in that kind of marriage, please reach out to a godly counselor for help. But for the rest of us, what more can I say except let's take the 30-day challenge. It's something I'm in the middle of with my husband, Bob, right now, and it's been such a blessing. Now, to help you through the process, we'd like to send you the resource you've been hearing about. Nancy demoss Walgamuth is back with the details. I really believe that as you step out to express encouragement to your mate, that God will breathe fresh life into your marriage. And that's why I hope that every married woman who's listening to my voice today will take the 30-day husband encouragement challenge that we've been talking about all this week. And when you take that challenge, why don't you let us know how it goes? We have a call in line set up specifically for you to share how God's been at work in your life and marriage. So get in touch with us and let us know how it's going on building up your husband with your words of encouragement. Here's the number. It's area code 269-697-6161. You can call and leave us your message there. Again, the Revive Our Hearts testimony call in line is 269-697-6161. Now, 
in order to help you stay consistent with this challenge, we've produced this special booklet, the 30-Day Husband Encouragement Challenge. As you're in this 30-day journey, you may find that you need some fresh ideas, and this booklet will provide exactly what you need. It'll also give you some scriptures to meditate on and space for you to journal your progress throughout this challenge. We'll be glad to send you this booklet, the 30-Day Husband Encouragement Challenge, when you make a donation of any amount to revive our hearts. When you make your donation, be sure to ask us for the 30-Day Husband Encouragement Challenge. Just visit us at reviveourhearts.com or give us a call at 1-800-569-5959. Today's program was unashamedly intended for married women. Next week, we want to turn our attention to women with the opposite relationship status, the equally beautiful and equally challenging, just in different ways, status of being single. Nancy has some helpful thoughts she recorded in the days just before she went from single to married, and you won't want to miss it. Have a wonderful weekend. I trust you can spend some time worshiping with your body of believers and then join us again on Monday for Revive Our Hearts. Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss-Walgamuth points you to freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.